animate with me. Paint a picture. Today we're going to animate this girl painting a picture. Go ahead and adjust the settings how you like. I usually change the background to a solid color. I think this time I'll go with a light blue, but you can choose any color that you'd like. I'll also change the settings to YouTube 1080p. I'm going to start drawing the first frame. The first thing I do is make sure that I like my brush size. That looks a little thick, so I'm gonna bring it down. Much better. Then I always fix the eraser. Since the default eraser has soft edges, I always bring it down to 0% where it can be completely hard on the edges. I'll also decrease my eraser size. Now that I have the settings how I like them, I'm going to start drawing my character. You can draw in any style that you'd like. While drawing, be sure to close all gaps so that the fill bucket tool can work when we color later. Also remember that the less detail you include, the easier it will be to duplicate when we go frame by frame. It's also easier to color with the bucket tool when there are less details. After drawing this first frame, I realized that I drew her a little too small. By using the lasso selection tool, I selected her and increased her size. I'm going to put my easel on a separate layer. It's a good idea to put it on a separate layer because your easel will not move while the rest of her moves. After you have drawn your easel, be sure to return to your original layer. Now you can continue drawing your girl. Before I draw the next layer, I'll make sure that I have my onion skin turned on. I'll also adjust the settings. I like to have one frame before and one frame after. Now I'll press down on my first frame, copy it, and paste it to the next one. The main movement in this animation is her arm. So I'll go ahead and erase her arm. I'll be careful to try to draw the same proportions as I swing her arm over to the other side for her final position. It usually takes me a couple tries. It looks to me like her arm is bending in the same place and is about the same length. So I'll go ahead and finish drawing this arm. I'll now go back and erase parts of her clothing that the arm is now covering. Keep in mind as you draw the hand that over here, the hand was facing us, so on this side we should see the back of the hand. While I'm drawing, I'm always referring back to my first layer. That's why it's important to have the onion skin on, to make sure that you're keeping the proportions consistent. We now have our first and our last frames. To add more realism to this, I think I'm going to move her head as well. As her arm is bending forward, I'm going to move her head downwards. So I'm going to erase her head, and using the onion skin as my guide, I'll draw her head in a slightly more down-tilted position. As I'm drawing her head, I'm constantly looking back and forth between the frames to make sure that it makes sense. With the two most extreme points in the animation done, we can begin to in-between. I'm going to again copy my first layer and paste it afterward. Wherever I see green, I'm going to erase. I see green on her arm, so I'll erase her first arm. And I see green on her head, so I will erase her head. If you don't see green or red sticking out anywhere in the animation, that means that that part is staying the same. I'm now going to begin in-betweening on her head. To do this, make sure that you draw it directly in between the green and the red lines. With the head finished and looking good, I'm going to try to end between the arm. At this point, the arm disappears behind the easel as it goes from the high point to the low point. So I'm going to draw just part of the arm since we don't need to draw the whole thing behind the easel. When we fill in the easel, you won't see this stubby arm, so that looks good to me. And with that, congratulations, you've now just completed your first in between.
All right, we got quite a few in-betweens now, and the animation is looking pretty smooth. I'm now going to show you how I color my animations. Starting at the first frame, I'll go to my Fill Bucket tool, click on the color, and I'll choose a color for skin. Once I have chosen the right color, the process for coloring the animation is pretty fast. Using two hands, I click with my pencil on the face, and then I go to the next frame and click again. I'm going to turn off my onion skin so you don't see the pink overlay. And now I can continue coloring the skin. Click with the first finger and then paint, and continue. Now I have all 10 frames painted with the face. It's as easy as that. I go one color at a time and quickly color through all my frames. I'm going to complete coloring this frame now to show you my process for shading next. To color the easel, I'll go to the easel layer and fill that in as well. To begin shading, I'm first going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to bring that layer's opacity down to 40%. To do this, click and drag on the 100%. Now that I'm drawing on that layer, the opacity of my paint will be lower, so it'll look more like shading. I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool and choose a dark blue color. When shading, make sure that you have the same light source in mind as you do the shadows on your entire animation. For this one, I'm going to have the light coming from the left side, so all the shadows will be on the right side of her face. Shading definitely takes a while because you have to go layer by layer to do your shading. Some might not think this step is necessary, but for me, I think that it gives your animation a more professional look. Using this first keyframe as my guide, I would continue doing the same process of shading all the way until the final frame. I didn't mention it in the beginning, but in my original animation that I practiced with, I gave my animation girl bangs. I decided to draw this animation of the girl without bangs because it took a long time to do the in-betweening with the bangs and to do the shading. While you and I might have used different styles to animate this girl, I think that it's still true that the less detail is much easier when drawing in all of your keyframes and shading. I hope this helps. Have a swell day.